What I want to do is just take a step back for a second and remember, this is FM5, right? The title of FM5 was... Oh. Who remembers? Borrowing. Credit and borrowing. Oh, Very yes. good. Yes, sir. Um, credit and borrowing, which include ideas like annuities and all that kind of thing. But it's really just about these two groups of people and the relationship between them. Creditors are people who loan money to others, and debtors are the people who borrow, right? So you could call these lenders and borrowers if you like. Now, one of the key ideas underneath this whole topic, which it took me years to understand, like even after I started earning money, I didn't really think this through, which is that creditors and borrowers, they're literally two sides of the same coin. Sometimes you're one and sometimes you're the other. Now, we've been thinking about present and future value very recently, right? Present value and future value. And we've been looking at both of them through the lens of, you're an investor, you've got superannuation, you're the one putting money in, what will it be in the future if you put in $1,000 every year? Um, what is that equivalent to right now as a compound interest loan in the present day if you wanted the same amount at the end? Present and future value. We've been thinking about it from the point of view of being um, uh, lenders and putting money into a bank and saying, hey, I'm lending you my money right now. What are you going to pay me as a benefit? Okay. But... These same concepts, because these two ideas are just two sides of the same coin, these same concepts equally apply to borrowing money, which is why we're looking at loan repayments today. Okay? So we're switching gears, but we're looking at the same concepts. It just takes a little extra thought, which I'm going to guide you through. So I've just jotted down the essential details from question one, and we'll talk through it. Uh, Thorn borrows this amount of money to buy a home unit. It's pretty funny how quickly that number gets out of date. But anyway, you can't buy something in Sydney for that amount anymore. The interest rate is 4.8% per annum. They say it compounds monthly, and he agrees to repay the loan over this amount of time. Okay? Um, calculate the monthly repayment. That's the first question. So the first thing we need to do is notice that the information they've given us, um, the interest rate and the amount of time, uh, both not in the format we need them for to answer this question. What's wrong with them? They need to be monthly and currently they are uh, per annum and years. Okay? So the first thing we need to do is convert both of them. 4.8% okay? per annum, we want to work out what is that equivalent to as a percentage per month. So what do you do? 0.004. Okay, so if you divide this by uh, 12, 12 months, right? you're going to get 0.4% percent, which as a decimal, whoops, is 0 0.004, yes? So your calculator should be telling you 0 0.004 if you put in 4.8% and divide it by 12. Okay? I don't know 0.004%. No. So if you put in 4.8 into your calculator and you didn't type in the percent sign, and you divide that by 12, you'll get 0 0.4, right? And that's, that's a percentage. But if you typed in 4.8%, the percent is divided by 100, which is why you can see the difference in the decimal oh, okay. points. Is that okay? So this is the percentage, and this is the decimal. Okay? So far, so good. I need to do the same kind of thing for this. How many months? You multiply, you're multiplying by 12, because there are more months, so that gives you... 240. Okay, so far so good. Now I want you to pause for a moment and think. This bit's tricky. The hard part is not the button mashing and the multiplying and the adding and all that. The hard part is the thinking and working out, well, what tools should you use? You've got all these tools in your tool belt now. What are the right ones to access? Okay. Now, think for a moment. There are monthly repayments. So that means he's putting money in and he's doing it repeatedly. So therefore, which of these do you think is the most suitable option? If he's taking money and regularly depositing them, which of these makes sense? Future value makes sense. Because remember, future value is about taking some annuity, right? And then doing it over and over and over again, and then you end up at some certain point, okay? So just keep that in mind for a second. Future value, $290,000 is what you have to pay off. Right? So on the face of it, it would make sense to say what is the amount he's going to have to pay every month. I actually should write this. Monthly repayment 
So it's functioning like an annuity such that it gets to $290,000. That seems reasonable, except for a teeny little problem. And this is where we have to wrestle with the difference between these two things when you are looking at it from different angles. Okay? While Fung is making his repayments, right, each payment he makes, its future value grows because each payment gets interest and he puts more and more payments in. That's fine. Okay? But while his repayments are growing, there's something else that's growing as well. Namely, this big fat debt that he has. Right? So it's almost like a tug of war between the bank, which currently says, hey, you owe me this, and this is going to gain interest versus forms repayments, which are also going in, and they also need to um, gain interest, okay? So therefore, the monthly repayments, they will not total to this, right? They'll total to a much larger sum. What are they going to total to? I will, I will, I will. It's, it's a tricky idea. It's a tricky idea. I got confused about it the first time when I got a mortgage, right? $290,000, right? If he pays this off over 20 years, because they're constantly charging him interest throughout that time, by the end, he will have paid off a lot more than $290,000. That makes sense, doesn't yes. it, right? Because if he paid it off this second, he'd pay off that. But even if he paid it off next year, it would have some interest added on, right? He's not paying off next year, he's paying off in two decades, okay? So what I need to work out is, well, what will that much larger amount, what is that going to be equivalent to? So that's just compound interest. Um, A equals P outside of one plus R to the N. The large amount that his loan is going to end up with is going to be 290,000, should have dollars there, right? And then I'm going to operate on this monthly compounding thing, right? So I'm gonna have one plus, we already worked out what the monthly interest rate is going to be. It's 0.004. And how many times does it gain that interest? Okay, now go reach your calculator. You're gonna get a number out of this, and it's quite large, right? What is it? 755. 755? And some cents is what? Uh, 0.03. Okay, now just pause before we uh, progress any further. That number's big. <laughs> That number is more than double what he's actually borrowing, right? Also, but still the, buy you a house. <coughs> yeah, yes, that's right. This still isn't going to get you very far in Sydney, jerks. So um, this is big. This is big. But that's what happens. The longer you wait, the more this number is going to end up. In fact, really quickly, if you still got that in your display, just suppose you want to pay it off over 30 years. My, my mortgage is a 30-year mortgage. I've tried to pay it off faster. How would I change this? The interest rate is still going to be the same. What will change? The number of months. The number of months will change, right? 30 years is 30 times 12 months. That's 360. Just quickly, if it's still in your calculator, go ahead, put everything the same, and just change that to 360. What do you get? 1,220,000 dollars, right? Which you, uh, what's that? That's like four times. Four times the amount that he's borrowed. That's a more okay. reasonable price for now. Yeah, now we're, now we're getting to Sydney level. Okay. okay, so the first lesson to learn is, holy cow, that number is big. Okay. Now, this is what the monthly repayments have to cover, and now your future value thing makes sense. Now your future value has to be this. And now you're going to repay, that's the actual debt you're going to end up repaying after 20 years. Okay, so... Um, I'm going to say the monthly payments must pay off this total. 